Hey, this is Anthony from Revzol TV. We can watch, decide, and ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Nex XT1 helmet available at Revzol.com. Next is back, and they're back in full force. The new XT1, top of the food chain in the sport and sport touring category. They've really done a lot of the premium details at a different level than we've seen from them in the past. Now remember, this is part of the new suite of Nex helmets. The XT1 for sport and sport touring, the XR2, which is really the race bred thoroughbred, and then you have the XD1, which is gonna be that adventure option with the peak. Now, even when you get into the XT1, you still have a few, or the XT1 rather, this helmet, you still have a few different flavors. You're going to have your solids coming in around that $400 mark. We have our graphics going up from there. This is the Lotus graphic, by the way. And there's also a carbon fiber version. This is going to be your matrix, X matrix, which is carbon fiber, fiberglass, and organic resins. That's going to come in at three pounds, eight ounces, three and a half pounds at a size medium. You can step up around that $500 mark and get an XT1 in a full carbon. You shave five ounces off of it, dropping it down to three pounds, three ounces. Keep that in mind. That's one of the things that I really think they got they did really well because you're looking at three shell sizes, DOT, ECE rated, and again, the design of this is really one of the things that pops out to me. We've seen a lot of call them more entry to mid-level helmets coming at it from this angular approach. I almost think fighter jet meets Lamborghini. Nex, now in a more high-end version, has taken that DNA and managed to tune it. We rode in it. We found it to be very quiet and very aerodynamic at speed. And the other thing they did that's a really standout feature here is they've designed this helmet to really work well with non-fared motorcycles. So you're gonna see a chin spoiler, you're gonna see a rear wing spoiler. Again, the aerodynamics, whether you're in the upright or three-quarter, if you're, but if your bike more importantly has plastics or doesn't have plastics, it's going to handle really well. And again, you have that buffer along the front to help deflect wind around the helmet, knowing that the fairing on your bike would not be doing it. Let's talk briefly about fit. You've heard me talk about the weight a little bit. I've talked about the aerodynamic profile. There are a few other key things that are really I'm going to hammer home. But from a fit standpoint, this is going to be an intermediate to long oval head shape. So that means that it's going to be a little bit longer front to back, like a normal intermediate oval. We're actually calling it that it's a little narrower. I'm not going to call it long oval like I would in a Rye Signet Q or something along those lines, but it's a little more narrow than we were expecting from a traditional intermediate oval, and I actually think that suits well. When I think of another helmet that's gonna fit along those lines, I think about like the Armada from Icon or some of those other helmets at the, in the Icon lineup that just have that little longer profile, but they're still not so long that they're super, super narrow and uncomfortable. Keep in mind, we're gonna ship for free over 39 bucks, use this size chart, and as always, I'd love to you click our logo Subscribe to us at Revzilla TV. Leave me your comments, your questions, your feedback on the new Nex XT1. Now, diving into some of the other creature comforts here as we work our way through the exterior. You're gonna notice the ventilation scheme. Three key vents on the intake side of things. You're looking at a chin vent, drop down, it's gonna vent to the shield. But one of the things you're gonna notice on that shield is it's a Pinlock Max Vision lens that comes stock in the box. We're gonna talk more about the shield, but the fact that it's coming with this price with a full Pinlock system in the box, that's a huge, huge touch. Now, moving into the chimney here, single actuated chimney vent, venting to 10 millimeter vent holes on the top of the head. Again, that's why I really think sport and sport touring, I think upright riding the three quarter in the tuck, it's not gonna be fully optimized. But what I like about it is if you look at the profile of the actuator on top, with your finger, it actually hurts. With your glove on, you can actually find it. So again, big enough and pronounced enough that it's gonna be very easy to find with a gloved hand. Now, working our way back, you're going to see the exterior function, these Venturi vents. They're a little bit more passive. Remember, high-speed air moving over a sphere, area low pressure, it's gonna extract warm, moist air from your body out of the helmet itself. And notice on the side here, we have this actuator. The actuator is actually working the drop-down sun visor. So if I open my shield, you're going to see that it's coming stock, and that's why it's not Snell, it's DOT and ECE, with an 80% dark drop-down sun visor, giving you that full dark smoke. It's gonna be fog-free, scratch-resistant, and you can actually go 60% or clear with the replacement drop-down lenses. It's not spring-loaded, it's easy to find with a glove. A lot of the time, the spring-loaded drop-downs are gonna have that bounce to them, but the actuation is simple, and it's very, very smooth. We're fans of what they did there. Now, we think more about the shield here, there are a couple things going on. The first thing is the X-Swift system, which is this button at the middle. They gave you the middle option, whether you're going righty or lefty to open it up. If we push the button, it's spring-loaded. It cracks the helmet into the city position to get a little bit of airflow. And as we start to move it up, you're going to notice it is Lexan. It is heavy-duty. It's not one of those lighter weight polycarb 
shields, it's got a little bit of beef to it. As you move it up, it has nice and strong detents. Actually so strong at the top that you really have to push on it to get it to go back down. And when it comes down, you're also gonna notice that it does lock in. So it has this system along the side pod that is going to be tension mounted. So when it moves down, it actually locks itself into position, creating a great seal around the gasket. When I open it up, I wanna give you the shot of that gasket. Notice the gasket reaches up and around that eye port completely. Again, great seal coupled with the fact that it's spring loaded, gives you that rock solid lock and then you have the X Swift lock in the front. There's a lot going on here. Now if we think about the shield change mechanism, it's not the easiest one I've ever used, but because there's a drop down sun visor, you're really not going to be spending a lot of time changing shields, but I'll show you how it works. You would push it forward like this and then you move it forward like that. Again, I've done that about 20 times, so I'm pretty rock solid and fast at it. Very easy going on, but it takes a couple tries to get used to. There you go, back on, no problems there. It takes a couple tries to get used to once you get it out of the box. But now you have my video, so you know how to do it. Now, if we move around to the back side of the helmet, you're gonna see how these angles converge. They come together, you have two additional winglets. There's your two additional extractors out the back. And you're also gonna see as you come down here towards the bottom, nice big foil going across the bottom. Remember, this helmet was designed to play well, obviously, with a fared motorcycle, but to play really well for that Ducati monster crowd, that unfaired motorcycle crowd, the naked bike, the SV650. If you're on a bike like that and you don't have that fairing, it's gonna do a really great job of deflecting the wind. It's not gonna buff it, and it's gonna be nice and quiet. When we went out and rode in it, we found that it vented really well, it didn't whistle, and it was quiet, it didn't buff it. We're very happy with its performance, and that's why really from our standpoint, Nex is not one of the traditionally widespread helmet brands here in the States. They're really on a big push. They've been around for a handful of years. That's one of the things that's gonna help solidify them coming into this premium range is the fact that they've hit the details really, really well. Now, one of the other things I want to get into are the guts of this helmet. You'll see I pulled two things over. One is my trusty donut, and two is this packet full of fun. And the packet full of fun is the Ergo system from Nex. They are one of the few manufacturers that's doing this, but what they're giving you is a way to tune the fit. And I should have talked about that in our fix section, but you're getting four millimeter and two millimeter pads that you're either gonna utilize in one of two ways. You're gonna pick the heavier duty ones or the lighter weight ones, and you're gonna use them at the occipital ridge and on the sides of the head. So you have the ability to fine tune that fit and really snug it down. That's a really nice touch. We've seen the high-end Dionese helmets with their new fit system allowing you to adjust the interior comfort liner. We've seen some other brands that have tried this and moved away from it. The next Ergo system gives you those stickers. They're not reusable, but you have, a multi you have multiple points of tuning for the inside of the helmet. Now when we look at it, it's a micrometric system, which means it's one hand operated. Some people love that, some people don't like that. It's really your personal preference. I'm actually neutral on it. And if we look at the rest of the guts, notice it comes with a chin curtain that is fully removable, and it's a cool max interior. So it's gonna be wicking, it's gonna be antimicrobial, it's gonna be cool against your skin. Cool max is a premium material. We see Arai use it, we see some of the other manufacturers use it at the higher end helmets. So again, you're getting cool max for using premium components. It's also an emergency cheek pad removal system. Again, EMT, if you're unconscious, emergency cheek pad removal system is going to allow you to fully pull out your, both the cheek pad as well as part of the neck roll. See how that comes down here? Fully contoured, 3D, nice and heavy duty. I'm going to pull my other one out here with a normal snap. I'm not going to use that emergency cheek pad removal system. Pop that bad boy out. Again, fully encompassing, meant to go against your face. Remember, helmets break in about 10%, but when you get them, you should really feel like they're almost pressing against your cheeks into your teeth. And then we look on the inside of the helmet, I'm gonna pull out my comfort liner now. I'm gonna ratchet it around the back, and as I'm moving it, you're gonna see there's areas, there's some areas that we might be able to remove some panels on the inside, and that's because this helmet is fitted for the XCOM system. So, a lot of folks in the riding universe now are going to third party or aftermarket communication, Bluetooth entertainment devices. What Nex has done is they partnered with Cena, and they now have a compartment for the XCOM unit, which is really a Cena SMH10 that's gonna OE fit into this helmet with speakers, and now it's gonna house the battery, house the functionality, house the speakers and you're not going to have any sail off the side which is going to stick out any further than it needs to be so you're not going to get that additional wind noise. If we move into the helmet guts itself, notice you're going to see the speaker cutaways around the ear pockets. Again, that's where your Nexcom would integrate. And this does not mean that you couldn't put on another third-party aftermarket system to the helmet. It just means that you could buy the Xcom, which is rock solid, which will pair with any Cena device. Up to four riders, you're going to get that full functionality. And again, 
have the ability to integrate it with your helmet so you don't turn, in, turn it into a sail on the side. If we move it up, you're going to see 10 millimeter vent holes that work all the way back. You see that? And on the front here, I have the sticky mount here. We actually have a pad that's built into the helmet from Go, so you can swap that out. Notice the big air channels moving their way all the way to the back, promoting good airflow all the way down the occipital ridge in the back of the head. Again, it's what you'd expect at the premium level from Cena. And we talk about the 3D Comfort Liner. We talked about Coolmax. Again, high end, comfortable to get the skin, multiple densities with big cutaways that are going to promote airflow through the Comfort Liner as well. Everything here is designed to be very functional for high use in a pretty demanding environment to a rider that's experienced enough to understand the difference between an upgrade and a great helmet and something that might be mid-range or entry level. Remember, this is the X-T1. There's also an X-T1 car Carbon starting around the $400 mark in solids and you go up from there. Keep in mind, if you're looking to get to the track, check out the XR2. And if you want to do dual sport riding, if you're thinking about Multistrada 12GS, you're going to be rocking that XD1 with a peak, which is this helmet with a peak in a slightly different configuration. The next step in your journey is to click right here, read other rider reviews of the new Nex XT1 at RevZilla.com. Remember, you don't have to take my word for it. As always, we'll ship for free over 39 bucks. If you want to talk to a gear geek, see us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown. Remember, subscribe to us at RevZilla TV. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.